Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve from Snow Foundry. I've gotten a really great response on my how to install Arch Linux video and my how to install Fedora 24 video, and so I wanted to make one on how to install Ubuntu 16.04. For this installation, I picked one of the tougher laptops you can use to install Linux on, which is the Lenovo ThinkPad W541. The reason this one is interesting is because it has a high DPI display, just like the MacBooks, and it also has switchable graphics, so it has an Intel card and an NVIDIA card. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first step to install Ubuntu 16.04 is to download Ubuntu from the website. So head on over to Ubuntu.com, click the download link, click desktop, and select Ubuntu 16.04, which is their newest long-term supported release. Ubuntu does this really cool thing where they have uh, development releases and then they have long-term supported releases. So the long-term supported releases don't change as often and are much more stable, and things like Steam, etc., run better on the long-term supported release instead of the uh, constantly moving, constantly developing releases. Okay, so the first thing we need to do after we download the ISO is put it on a USB key. Don't just click and drag it on the USB key. We have to use special programs. I'm going to link to them in the notes and put them on the video here. Uh, so what you can do is, is you can go to Ubuntu. It's there in the documents section for how to make a USB key. And depending on Windows or OS X or Linux, it's going to be a different instruction. So follow the instructions for your operating system and then come back to this video once you've made a USB key. Okay, so I've powered on the computer. I'm just going to hit the F12 key a bunch until I hear a beeping noise. At that point, I know it's going to pop up a boot menu, and I'll be able to select the USB drive to boot off of. So the blue menu has popped up here. I'm just going to arrow down. It says USB HDD. Your may, yours may read slightly different depending on which kind of USB key you got, but pick the USB drive or the thing that's labeled Ubuntu, and go ahead and hit enter there. At this point, it's going to boot up, and it's going to say try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. I'm just going to pick try Ubuntu. Uh, there's no downside to either one. When you try Ubuntu, you can still install it. Uh, but try Ubuntu is fun if you want to figure out, will this hardware work before you permanently install it? Because the way we're going to install Ubuntu today means we're going to overwrite any data that's in your hard drive, which would include things like Windows or your My Documents folder, etc. Uh, so if you just want to try it and not damage anything, click the Try button and then don't follow the install. But you'll be able to see, does your hardware work? Do your brightness keys work? Do your audio keys work, etc.? cetera? Uh, which is really helpful if you're trying to determine if Linux is right for you. And you can also try different programs out on the tried version. So unlike Windows, where you have to basically install it to use it, on Ubuntu Linux, you can do the live version. You can download programs. You can see if they load fast, if they have the right kind of usability you're looking for, etc. all without actually altering your system, which is a really neat feature. Okay, so now that we're booted up to the try screen, uh, we are going to test all the different hardware pieces, make sure they work under Linux before we actually overwrite Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and test the trackpad. It looks like it works great. I'm going to test the track point, and that's moving also. And so then we can go and we can test all of our special keys, and we can see if the Wi-Fi works. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the volume keys here, and they are working and changing volume, no problem. I'm going to go ahead and hit the brightness keys. Uh, it is changing my screen brightness, so that's awesome. And now I'm going to go ahead and join a Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Wi-Fi icon up here. I'm going to go to my local Wi-Fi, type in a password, and see if that connects. If the Wi-Fi connects, we know that we're good. We can continue the install. If any of these steps don't work, uh, you haven't changed anything with your system, you can just reboot back into Windows. So if you, need, if you can't get on the wireless and you need to Google for something, etc., you can just reboot now, go Google for it, figure out... Did something go wrong? Uh, and then you can come back to this. So we've configured our Wi-Fi and we're connected to a network. At this point, things are going well. We've already tested the brightness keys and the touchpad and the track point. And with the network connected, we know we're good to install. If you haven't had the same luck, go ahead and head on over to Ubuntu forums where you can ask your question there or post a comment on the YouTube video. And myself or somebody watching the video will try and help you out. In general, um, it's a lot of laptops just work out of the box with Linux. If you got one that didn't, Sometimes it can be a pain because they use some kind of weird, cheap wireless card, etc. cetera. Uh, so if you have a problem, uh, you may just want to find a laptop that works with Linux. Again, most laptops work out of the box. The Dell XPS 13, no problem. Uh, ThinkPads always seem to work really well. Uh, so your mileage may vary there, though, if you have a problem at this stage. And I'd recommend just rebooting and checking out your options for getting a Linux-compatible model. I'd also recommend Chromebooks, uh, which I'm going to do a following video on. Uh, which will describe how to install Linux on a Chromebook because Chromebooks actually run Linux. So uh, those are usually good targets also. One other thing to note here is I'm using a high DPI display. 
that means that I have a whole bunch of pixels there, uh, double the normal amount of a normal laptop. Ubuntu does have a display scaling setting. So if you click the Ubuntu icon and go to displays, it will let you adjust the scale of the display. So if the text is hard to read or too small, uh, you can just adjust that slider over to the right and that will make the interface bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now for the video so that it's a lot easier to read on YouTube with all the text we're gonna have here. Okay, so now we're ready to install Ubuntu. Go ahead and then click the install icon. The installer's gonna pop up and ask for a language choice. Uh, in our case, we're just gonna click English. Uh, that's fine. And then we're gonna go to the next step. We're gonna tell it to download updates and use third-party software. So um, sometimes there's third-party firmware for like Wi-Fi drivers, et cetera, we need. So it's always useful to install that third-party software. If you can get a laptop that doesn't need it, that's great. But uh, a lot of the existing laptops out there still need things like firmware to work. So we're gonna click continue there after we've checked those boxes. And in the next step, we're gonna go ahead and figure out uh, which hard drive to install it on. Most laptops only have one hard drive. And again, if you have Windows installed there, if you follow this video, we're going to erase Windows. Uh, so keep that in mind that this will destroy whatever data is there, including things like in your documents folder. So don't run this unless you're ready to install Linux for sure. Uh, so right now what it's doing is it's going across my hard drives. I have three in this case. I have a main hard drive. I have one I'm storing the screencast on, and I also have the USB drive. And so it's checking each of those, which takes a little longer than normal uh, before you actually see the screen. So we've reached the point in the install where it's gonna ask us how we wanna configure our disks. I recommend that you use encryption. So we're gonna go ahead and check the boxes here that tell it to encrypt the disk. Uh, there's a slight performance hit on encryption, but in general, it's always a better idea to encrypt your system. So that way, if you lose it, if you leave it unattended, uh, people won't be able to steal your passwords. In most cases, when a disk isn't encrypted, somebody can walk by, put a USB key in there, reboot, and take all of your data and now that we have increasingly more and more of our data online for things like credit cards and online accounts, et cetera, like if somebody got in my laptop and took my Amazon password, uh, that'd be pretty dangerous. And so if you encrypt it, you don't have to worry about uh, thieves getting your data when you leave your laptop unattended or alone, uh, or for that matter, if you sell it. So when you sell a laptop, uh, some people can actually recover the data off of your hard drive. If you encrypt your laptop, when you sell your laptop, you don't have to worry about sanitizing the drive uh, because even if they did read the data off of it, it wouldn't make sense to the thief. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to click erase disk and encrypt it. And it's going to ask me for a passphrase. And I'm going to use the passphrase of, of YouTube. Uh, you should use something much longer, as long as you can possibly remember. Uh, YouTube is not a good passphrase. That should be pretty obvious. Uh, use something as long as you can remember. Uh, usually a couple words with like some special characters is pretty safe. Um, we're going to go ahead and tell it to do SDA. SDA just means the first drive, second drive's SDB, third drive's SDC. Uh, so we'll pick SDA here. It tells me 256 gigs and we're not going to do anything special there other than click install. So at this point in the install, we've clicked OK and we're about to install Ubuntu on the hard drive. It's going to ask me once more to confirm it and I'm going to click go ahead and continue and off we go. So while Ubuntu is installing, it's actually gonna prompt us for a time zone and our user details, which we haven't entered yet, which is pretty nice because in the background, it's installing to the hard drive. And then while it's doing that, we can continue configuring the install, which makes the whole process a lot quicker and a lot smoother. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're in the New York time zone. And I'm gonna go ahead and say we speak English and that our keyboard's English. Uh, if you're an international uh, citizen, those settings may be different, but for me, I'm just gonna click English and uh, standard keyboard. So we're gonna go ahead and configure our user details now. So I'm gonna enter my username. I'm gonna enter in a name for the computer. Uh, I just call it like the model of the computer. You can name it anything. Some people name them after things like World of Warcraft shards, uh, Game of Thrones characters, etc. It doesn't matter what the name is. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, you don't even have to remember it, so it's not a big deal. So in this case, I'm gonna name the computer YouTube. I'm gonna choose a password of YouTube and I'm gonna confirm that password. There's an option here to encrypt your home folder. You don't need to do that because we encrypted the whole hard drive. If for some reason you didn't want to encrypt the whole hard drive, you have the option of just encrypting your home folder, which is still a good measure against people who would want to steal your data. Uh, but if we encrypt a whole disk, I think that that's secure enough without encrypting the actual user uh, folder itself. So we're gonna click continue there, and now we're gonna come up to the Ubuntu installation screen. This is gonna give you a progress bar and show you some slides that say, hey, you're installing Ubuntu and have you tried this? Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and wait about three or five minutes and let us do its thing. It's actually down here, it's telling us right now, we, we are retrieving updates from the network. So 
it's actually already copied its files onto the hard drive. And now it's just getting the most up-to-date updates from the internet, uh, which is really dependent on your network speed. In my case, I have a pretty fast network and it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes before we move forward. If you wanna see more details about the installation process, just click the little arrow next to the text and that's gonna go ahead and expand it and just show you the kind of command line output that it's working with. Uh, you can see here it's updating our Linux image and that it's running package installations, etc. And again, it's updating from the internet, so it takes a minute to download all the updates and files. It's almost like a Windows update, although you don't have to reboot like four or five times after that. So if you've ever installed Windows 10, you're gonna install it, you're gonna do update, you're gonna get drivers, you're gonna reboot, reboot. Uh, this step kind of just does it all in one shot here during the install, uh, which is pretty nice. So that way when we reboot, we'll already be running the most up-to-date software available. You can also see that during the install, it removes a bunch of packages we don't need. So it's removing different things like languages I didn't select, uh, which is pretty neat that it actually slims down your system during the install so that when I reboot, I only have the packages I need to use it. As part of the install during the end phases, it's also getting those third-party drivers. So you can see it downloading things like video codecs so you can play different pieces of video and mp3s etc out of the box uh, and it's all kind of baked right into ubuntu which is a feature you don't find in some other distributions okay so while it's installing the packages i'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video uh, i've recorded the entire process end to end so you can see how it looks like uh, without me kind of doing these video cuts uh, but i'm just going to speed it up so while you're watching it right now it's going a little faster than i actually did but you're still seeing the whole thing happen right before your eyes and that's it. So the installation finished successfully. Uh, it was able to install everything in the hard disk, put a passphrase on there. In our case, it's YouTube. And in your case, it's something much more difficult to remember. Uh, and now we're going to reboot. We're going to log in for the first time and try to install a couple pieces of software such as Steam so that you can actually do some fun things with your laptop. And now that the install is done, make sure you take the USB key out so that you're actually booting up your hard drive. Uh, you can use the USB key to boot off of again. Nothing changed with it. So you can take it to another computer or do whatever you want with it, but you don't need it anymore to boot your laptop. Okay, so I've entered my disk encryption password and now the system is booting up. Uh, you'll notice that it booted up nearly instantly. That's because Linux is a super efficient operating system used in almost everything you can think of. So if you've ever shopped at amazon.com, their entire platform runs on Linux. And if you've ever uh, gone to iTunes, all of their servers run Linux. If you've ever used Spotify, if you've ever used Google Photos, uh, all of those servers all run Linux. And so you're getting kind of all that super optimized server technology that's constantly getting better, constantly evolving on your laptop, which is a pretty neat feature. Okay, so now that Ubuntu is installed, we're gonna go ahead and enable the universe and the multiverse repositories. Uh, that's where we can get additional software that Ubuntu doesn't include by default, but I'm gonna show you how to install Steam and you can get nearly anything off of there. So we're gonna go ahead and click the Ubuntu icon over here and just type software. And we're gonna go to software and updates. So at software and updates, uh, in this case, mine are already checked. If yours aren't checked, check the universe and the multiverse one. Okay, so now that we've got universe and multiverse installed, we can install a whole bunch of additional programs which may not be free software. So keep in mind that the things you download may not be like open source free software, uh, but they're still super useful on Linux. So we're gonna go ahead and install Steam to show you how to install different games. So I'm gonna type sudo apt get install Steam and I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask me for my password, I'm gonna hit enter, and I hit yes here. Now it's gonna go ahead and install Steam and all of its dependencies, uh, and which is the cool thing about Universe. So uh, Linux and the ecosystem have a whole bunch of great free software, and sometimes there's programs which aren't free software. So uh, big AAA commercial gaming titles like Dota and Counter-Strike, etc. those are not free open source software, and so you need to enable these additional repositories to be able to install them. Uh, which is why they aren't included by default, just like in Windows. In Windows, you have to go to the Steam website, download the client. We're doing the same thing here, although this makes sure that it's always up to date and that it, it installs in a secure manner that fits the system, uh, which is a pretty neat feature of Linux. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK and agree to this. Uh, and that's, that's just the Steam licensing agreement. So Steam has a big licensing agreement, you click OK, you agree, and then it's gonna start installing it. And now that we've installed Steam, we can just simply click the Ubuntu icon and type Steam and it's gonna pop up. So I'm gonna hit the key here, click Steam, and there you go, there's this. And you can actually drag this over if you want it on your Unity bar, for instance, um, anything like that. So we're just gonna click it and you see it's gonna start downloading and it's gonna download the full Steam client and that's it. Okay, so we've been able to install Ubuntu Linux, encrypt the hard drive and install Steam all in the matter of about 10 minutes. 
Uh, so Linux is super easy to install. If it works with your hardware, it's just a breeze. You just click, click a couple times. I didn't have to edit any files or do anything crazy. Uh, it just worked and now I can play games. I'm gonna make another video, which I'll link to here, uh, on how to install graphics drivers and how to deal with these switchable graphics because this laptop has two graphics cards. It has an Intel card and an NVIDIA card. I'm gonna show you how to shut off the NVIDIA card to save battery life, uh, which will kind of deal with that. But uh, other than that, you're ready to go. You're using Linux. You can now go ahead and check out the software button there and click and install things like IRC clients and graphics editors and Inkscape and all sorts of nice programs. So until next time.